Yo guys, what's going on? This is Yorkie Man here and welcome back to another episode of Bringing Back Bolton. It's been a little while, I've kept you all in suspense, but we have finished half of the season and let's show you what's been going on. Just to let you know, I do have a rating of an A+. So, you know, I'm good at this game. Let's see what's been happening. Right guys, so as you can see, we are currently third in the table. We are six points behind Southampton and doing very, very well. It's been a very strange season. As you can see, we've drawn 10 games. We've drawn 10 games. It's been mixed. But we found an okay balance. Rebuilding the squad again every season is extremely difficult when you're just basing everything on free transfers. We've got some decent players coming in as well. I'll show you who's coming in. I've now kind of sorted out in my head who we're going to move on, the players that are going to be leaving. There is the devastating news that no, Ryan Edmondson has not come back. I couldn't get him to come back. We do actually have some of our own strikers now, though, for once. Camelino did come back. We'll take a quick look at Ryan Edmondson, though, because it's the only right way to kick off an episode. So as you can see, instantly, he's just been absolutely wasted at Porto. He's done absolutely nothing. They barely played him. Two appearances off the bench, but they won't loan him back to me, and it's an, it's just a disgrace. The less we look and the less we talk about this guy, the better. It's a disgrace. It honestly is a disgrace. Apparently, he's got a future transfer arranged, which just, that doesn't make sense. So we are going to potentially, in this window, go back in for him. Although, unfortunately, at this stage, I'm not sure we need a new striker. I'd probably rather sign him pay like his value and sign him but that won't be until next season and at this stage right now i have no clue how this season is going to go will we get promoted won't we get promoted i don't know we tend to be strong down the back end of seasons but i've got no idea if that's going to be the case this time around it's very worrying let's look at the players we did bring in though right so first of all let's have players out michael tate left for absolutely nothing but the big ones that left rayleigh we did so, Kaputska, it was a mistake. I should have never signed him. But the two players that left Rayleigh that are important was Set Vanderberg for 5 million. Good player. Would have been happy to keep him. I did find a pretty decent centre-back to replace him. But I would have been more than happy to keep him. But we needed the money. It was a decent fee, to be honest with you. He wasn't amazing last season. 5.5 million. So, thought, why not? I bit their hands off. Then also, we sold Politic as well to Toronto. I think I managed to get 4.5 million or 4 million for this one. So, we brought in more than enough money for this season. When we do look at the finances it's going to be really interesting to see where we're at i'm i'm quite excited we're finally getting to a stage where the debt is not as important at bolton anymore there is light at the end of the tunnel here at bolton but yeah politic went as well one from the start but at the end of the day it was a decent fee for him and he wasn't improving upon what he'd done he was basically a, a mid-tier bottom end championship player but a, a class league one player and we just i don't know his time had come unfortunately so as the theme dictates, as per usual, didn't spend a penny, brought 9 million in. It's very important. The players that we'll go through now is Bruno Philippe. He is a young uh, Brazilian lad. We brought in Tom Cannon, who has actually been fantastic. I'll show you Tom Cannon a little bit closer. Tom Cannon, he's coming. He's been brilliant. 21 appearances, 9 goals, 7 off the bench, uh, 2 manager match performances. He's been getting the goals up top for us. It's been a really weird one this year because Camelino has kind of been hot and cold. He's gone through patches where he's been absolutely dreadful. Tom Cannon just seems to pop up and get an important goal when we need it. And what's more important, we own him. Tom Cannon is our player. I'm very happy. Signing from Everton, good young lad. Another big signing with Nils Frolling. He has not been good, though, let's be honest. An average rating of 6.57. He's been massively disappointing as the Swede, but he's valued at 9.7 million. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of tempted to see if we can move him on in this window because he's really not been good enough. Because he wasn't performing so well, I decided to bring in Frank Avina. He was on a free transfer. I'd already looked at him before, but decided him against him. I didn't think he was good enough for the championship. Although he's okay physically, he's just there's nothing there that stands out that makes you think, yeah, this guy's brilliant. Um, but having said that, we did Decided to sign him because Rosling was just doing dreadfully. Seven appearances, two off the bench, three goals, one assist. They've been very important goals as well. Instantly made a bigger impact than Frolling has done the entire time. So I think a pretty decent sign in and maybe we can keep, we'll keep Frank around and make some money off Nils. I'm just not sure anyone's going to pay anything for him. I'm not surprised AC Milan let him go. We also signed Tedden Mengi. He's been absolutely fantastic for us. Another free transfer, 19 appearances. He's got an average rating of 16.88. Pretty decent as a centre back. He's done better. Um, than what Vanderberg has done and what I really like about him is his pace 
he's really quick at getting back on that cover duty. So, yeah, very excited to sign him at the time, I think, from Man United, and he's been very good for us. We also signed Leighton Clarkson from Liverpool, a nice, decent playmaker, very good for this level, 23 years of age, fairly quick. He's just, he's a great playmaker. That's why we signed him, and we've got some decent playmakers. So, again, picking up the, uh, the Premiership rejects, but I'm more than happy to keep picking them up. He's been decent for us this season. Uh, and he is better than Besic as a defensive midfielder, but Besic is better defensively um, in terms of like his tracking back and stuff. I find when Clarkson on, he's better further ahead as deep line playmaker. But yeah, very good season for him so far. Average rating of 7.27. He's been very good for us. A little bit injury prone, but... Nonetheless, fantastic signing, Rayleigh. Started to slowly realise that the players that aren't worth that much money have been better signings for us than the rest. Um, the rest of these signings, nothing really of note. Glatzel was brought in because we started playing with a cam and I needed someone in that position. He's not very good at this level, to be honest with you, but he's the best I could get. Uh, Daniels, he's, he's barely played. I needed a uh, left mid cover at one point because Frolling was injured and at this point we didn't have Frank. Uh, so we brought him in and Ugo has been dreadful. We're probably going to sell him. Giuseppe he is a youngster who's done okay so far when we brought him on. I signed him because of how good he looked technically. He's got good determination and he's fairly determined. I genuinely think this guy's going to turn out to be a decent player. Uh, so I've started getting him as much game time as possible. At 21, he needs to start featuring in the team more if he's going to reach his potential. Um, and he's been okay. He's been a mixed bag, but he's been okay. Some The problem is, is some performances, he's absolutely dreadful. And then some, he's really good. Uh, but we'll just see how he progresses throughout the save. But yeah, I, I'm excited with the team we've got. Again, I don't think this team in any way, shape or form should be finishing in the top two or even really in the playoffs. But somehow we're just, we're managing to fluke it and the lads, well, enough of the lads are playing well enough in order for us to get decent results. So I can't complain. It's been a really good season, to be honest with you. There were some patches where I didn't think it was going to be so good though. So when I didn't think it was going to be so good, this is that patch. This is that patch of time where we just kept drawing games. We dropped down the table. We started off very well, if you look at it. Well, apart from the defeat to Barnsley and Blackpool, we had a really good start. We found some form, some consistency, and then it just kind of just kept dipping a little bit. We did beat Man United, though. That was a very, very glorious moment. Very excited. Very happy about that as well. So we did beat Man United. But the form just started. Noah just started to dip and dip and dip. And uh, we were getting less and less consistent performances. It was getting a little bit worrying and ultimately extremely frustrating to play at times. Because it, in this run here, apart from the Wigan win, it just felt like we couldn't buy a win. Uh, even the draws were frustrating. The draws were extremely frustrating because it just felt like we were always going to be pegged back. And a lot of late goals as well, to be honest with you. And it felt like it was always going to be pegged back. And I swapped back to the counter. We tried a formation with a camp. If you watch the 20 series, it was very similar to that. And we tried that and it worked. It worked in this spot here at the start of the season. It worked fantastically. But some strange reason, just stopped working. So what we did is I went back to the counter tactic that worked so well for us at the end of last season. And yeah, it's it's done it. We beat Stoke 1-0, Hull 1-0, Birmingham 1-0. We stopped conceding as sloppily. Uh, we beat Watford 2-0, draw to Huddersfield, but then beat Blackburn 3-0, draw to Blackpool, beat West Brom. Very good side in this league. Drew to Barnsley, just recently beat Middlesbrough so we brought the form round we are within touching distance with, with Southampton I mean the teams at the top are, are far superior to our squad we are within touching distance we do have a transfer window now in which we have a little bit of money I think we've got like a million pound probably not going to spend any of it but I have brought two transfers in so we've got these two lads that should be joining today we've got a new basically starting goalkeeper this young Nigerian lad that I managed to find uh Monday as well which is just it's just it's just the greatest name because I'm recording this on Monday and it's going up on Monday. These these kind of coincidences are what makes life brilliant. Monday is joining on Monday. The video's going up on Monday. Happy Monday. But yeah, as a goalkeeper, he just looks really good. So I'm excited about him. He's young. He's going to keep improving. Uh, so yeah, decent player. Although I didn't like the personality of Fickle, but we're going to try and mentor that out of him. And then for 44.5k, I don't, I couldn't understand this when I found him. Amar, he was playing in Algeria or Israel, I think, for an Israeli club. I think. Don't quote me on that. But... He's, look how good he is. Just look how good he is. He's, he's by far going to be our best left back, uh, left back when he comes in. He, he genuinely is. He's got 17 long throws as well, which just, just suits us. He's very quick. He's not that bad at going forward. And he's just, he's, he's good, isn't he? He's cream of the crop, 44.5k. So 
it does show that you should hunt around and look in different leagues. He's unambitious, but at this stage, when you find a player like this, personality-wise, I'm not worrying as much because we, I, I can't be as choosy as I normally would be on a save where I'm like, nah, I'm not signing in because of this. I'm not signing in. I can't do that here at Bolton because it definitely feels like I still can't spend a penny at the club. So I've not really been looking at any transfers that are going to cost real money. Now, he, he definitely was more than worth the price. But yeah, so th this is the situation we was in. So the personalities, these are not personalities I would usually go for. But in the situation we're in, we'll look to mentor them out. And it was just, it was needed. This is a brilliant left back. So speaking of the finances, what I will also show you here is the finances at the start of the season. I think they were roughly like 9 million, but I'll show you them on the screen now. And to be honest with you, I was really happy at the start of the season. What we'd managed to do financially was very good. But this is the finances now. 4.7 million in the balance, 1 million in the budget. You guys already know. I ain't touching that. I ain't going to spend that. There's no need to do it. If we look at the debt, this is the thing that makes me so excited. The debt is at 11 million now. We've nearly paid it off. The debt will be paid off as of next season. And that makes me really, really happy. I think it's something that has weighed the club down for more than long enough now. And this could be a season where next year we might be playing premiership football and be basically debt free. What a great feeling that'll be managing this team and being in that situation. Also, with how successful I've been, it's no surprise that I did get offered a premiership position. I got offered a job at 19th place Brighton. Obviously, I didn't take it. And to be honest with you, even if I weren't doing this save on YouTube, I probably still wouldn't have taken that job. It doesn't interest me much whatsoever. Um, but it's just nice to know that I'm wanted. As you can see, the club vision, the board just absolutely love me, which why wouldn't they? I've brought stability to this club that look destined to go out of the Football League. And now look at us. We are very, very close, guys. We are so close to getting to a stage now where we're going to be a premiership club. And I'm extremely excited excited about that and i'm looking forward to bringing in a higher caliber of player and i'm looking forward to spending some money i this is the first time i've ever done a save where i don't spend any money at this level being a championship club and just signing all i sign is three players we've this is i think this is the second season we've spent money in the entire save so far and i think this is season six and it's 44.5k now I don't know if we will spend a bit of money in January. It depends if we bring money in. Say Frolling goes for 10 million, then I think maybe I will spend a little bit of cash from that because why not? I think we've earned it, I, I, but it'd be a couple of million tops. Also, Canela is wanted. Now, Canela was a player when I first showed you him. I was like, ah, he's not that good. He's actually been very good and he's an extremely athletic player and a very good Brazilian, to be honest with you. He's had a decent season again. He's got himself five goals, but he is currently wanted and you know what I'm like. Hennen want him and if they are willing to pay, let's say, 15 million... Canela is gone. He's been very good this season, but it's not like he's not replaceable. Giuseppe's played in that position. We've still got Diogo Brass. So if the correct fee comes in for him, I will let him go. I'm also going to be looking at maybe moving a right back on, and it's probably not going to be Emmanuel. Emmanuel has been my starting right back mainly this season, to be fair. Emmanuel has played 17 games. And Dino's played 15, so Manuel's played more. Dino's had some terrible performances. So it looks like we'll look to move on Neko Williams this season. It makes sense. We won't get a lot of money for him, but why not move him on? It's some more money in the pot, and it's some more of this ridiculous debt paid off. But all around, I couldn't really be happier with the squad. Um, with the players that we've got performing at the level that they're performing at, we're having a very, very good season. And next year may be the first year where we don't need loan signings. I'm not a big fan of loan signings. I never have been. I'd rather have my own players. And that's why it was a worry that to get to this stage, we've had to use two loan strikers. But what surprised me the most this season is Camilio came back and I thought he was going to be so important. He's only managed to get three goals and two assists he's having a dreadful season and Tom Cannon our own player has managed to pick up the slack we also now have a young Brazilian of our own who we signed on the cheap I don't know how he's going to turn out I have no idea but his attributes to start with are pretty decent and I'm going to start favoring our own players so Camelinho we won't see much of anymore he's probably going to go back to Man United and, and that'll be it that'll probably be the last we see of him he might be moved on to different countries so on and so forth I don't know 
but I'm very happy with where the team is at in certain positions. I just think now we've got a big squad, a really big squad, really, for championship level, and we can start to move some of these players on, start getting some players off the books that we're not using, like Cameron here. Let's get him out. Sonny Graham now. It's a shame he was good, but not good enough for this level. And move some of these players on, bring some money in, and potentially maybe just make signings now that are extremely good players instead of thinking, I need to sign as many free transfers as possible. So let's quickly highlight the tactic we've been using this season. It is this one again. It's a custom fluid counter-attack, and it's been absolutely superb for us in this last set of games. I don't know if it'll be what we use all season. We have switched to a cam formation from time to time. I believe this one, very similar to what we've played at 20, and it's worked for us fantastically when we've had to switch to it. But... For the most part, we have played on the back foot as per usual. I feel like it's this team's strength to play on the back foot. We are tending to be an underdog in most games, and I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how we can find more players to fit this formation. And I would love to finally see this Bolton team back in the Premiership. Maybe not where you could say they belong, but just some, some great memories, and I would like to see them back there. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Bringing Back Bolton. I hope you've enjoyed it. I keep enjoying making these videos for you. If you haven't checked out the other series on the channel, we've got a Spurs Master League going on at the moment. We've also got an FC20 save, which is different to this. It's more of a month-by-month -month save that we keep updating, and there will be a new save coming very, very soon after that 20 series is done. Also, feel free to come and check me out on Twitch and hang out in the streams. All the information will be down below all my socials come and check me out my door is always open like it is in fm hope you guys are all staying safe and being positive in this tough time i've been yorkie man i'll see you in the next episode hopefully we'll be bringing the news that bolton are a premiership club but if not we're in a very good position moving forward